We're talking about goose. We're talking about goose. And I do, I do love color. I do. Colors are pretty. Star Trek Fleet Command needs more colors. Carlo, AQ is here. Oh, man. Love it. Got to represent that island of yours, AQ. Who's going to represent it if not you? Who's going to represent it if not AQ? I got to sneeze. It's stuck. Oh. Mm. Oh, gosh. I think the worst thing in life is having a stuck sneeze. Oh. Oh gosh, this is awful. Oh, this is awful. Um, oh, okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Welcome in, everybody. My name's Rev. I do Star Trek Fleet Command content. And we do War Thunder content. We're actually partnered with War Thunder. Come join us on Twitch. And we do Baldur's Gate. We, you know, we do content here. We entertain you. We answer your questions. And uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about incursions. Very curious to see how your server did in incursions. Did you win? Did you do okay? Did you do badly? How did you personally do? Want we'll know that? And then obviously we know Strange New Worlds is coming back to the game. And what could that mean? And have y'all watched the preview already in the trailer that just got released? Very curious. Torn says hides his head in shame because he forgot to get his incursion rewards for the deleted it. Hey, Torn. Hey, hold on. One uno momento. Remember, incursion is a regular event. So if you forgot to turn in your incursions currencies, don't worry. Another incursions will be happening very soon. Not during this upcoming arc, but following. Well, actually, I do know the date of incursions, but I don't know if I can share it yet. But there is another incursions already scheduled and planned. So, yeah, let's get it going. What happened to the Star Trek Infinite Solaris game? So, Pax, great question. Uh, so they got called in the fallout of a large game company basically folding. And they ended up having a ton of layoffs and they got called up in that. So Star Trek Infinite sadly dies, not because the game like was bad, but because money, money drama from above their heads. And that's just how the gaming cookie crumbles, I guess, sometimes, which really stinks because I enjoy it. But, yeah, uh, Incursions is happening over here, though. There's that. There's that. Day says Incursions need to be dying. I, I think that's going to vary for server to server. Uh, server 20 and server 21. Shout out to server 21. Had one of the most active Incursions that I've probably been a part of in the past six months. It will vary. And we definitely had people in our Discord talking about, hey, this Incursion was kind of dead for us. And I will say that for me personally incursions as a mechanic is stale again at the same time though incursions has for me always been about the community aspect of it so if y'all haven't seen it yet if you have not joined my discord i ask you to join it for no other reason than for this here uh, so join the discord i'm gonna put this on the screen here is our incursions channel we're currently collecting all of the results from the past uh, incursions here so if you don't see yours posted or your server posted, please come in and share it. We do track these to try to determine and keep up with everything that's happening. So shout out, for example, to server 15 that won 500 trillion to 60, which by the way, server 38, if you're in the channel, no shame. I mean, obviously a big player or two gave up a lot of points, but you scored 60 trillion server 38. No shame, none. No shame at all. That is a lot of points scored. So good job to 38. Sucks that, you know, 
obviously some really big bad things happen and this goes back to some of the things that i've argued for which is scoring adjustments need to be made for rating even though i think rating is great i think that score adjustments clearly need to be made so that stuff like that doesn't happen but i mean some great results here and if you don't see yours posted feel free to join our discord so you can post it and then here was my alliance or my server 21 versus 20 shout out to 21 and even them, shout out to server 21 you know why because server 21 scored 49 trillion points like that's nothing to shake a stick at that's good shout out to server 21 it was a great time hanging out with them so if you haven't seen your results posted feel free to come over to our discord and share those and we'll talk about it here in the stream I'm here in the stream. A storm uh, says that 401 was on a buy, and that's a newer server, so that's understandable uh, to see 401 on a buy. Uh, and I hate that they call them buy weeks. It bugs me a little bit. It's obviously a buy month because we don't do incursions on a weekly basis. But yeah, we're on a buy. So, server 30, uh, 131 here, and y'all won. Congrats, Alex, on your win in incursions. That's pretty dope. Congratulations. Right? I think that's cool. I enjoy it. I know it's not for everybody, but I definitely enjoy it no matter what if my friends are winning. So that's cool. That's cool. You win. I'm happy you win. Makes me happy. Makes me happy when all my friends win. So the curse is pretty much dead for anyone who's not big on PvP and rating. Okay, so I mean, literally, that's how it's always been from the beginning for two years, though. That's not different. That's not different. That's always been that way. Uh, we, I, I did about a year and a half worth of polling, and we could do another one because I am curious, but I'm not going to do another poll unless Scopely says they're willing to hear feedback on making changes. And it's not that they've said they're not. It's just they've not approached about it. Maybe something that if the community wants, I can bring up. I don't mind doing those things at all. But I haven't, you know, really relayed this as a thing in about, I'd say, eight-ish months. Uh, the last time I gave, I would say, heavy feedback. Anyway, point being, we can do another poll. But what I have found over the past two years is about anywhere, depending on how the structure of incursions goes, 35 to 45% of the game love incursions and the rest don't. And that has not moved over two years. It has been consistently in that realm. I don't think anything's really changed. The people who like it, like it. The people who don't, don't. And that's why it's one day out of a month instead of it being a regular occurrence. Because there are people at Scopely who would love for it to run a lot more. And I'm like, yeah, you can't do that for something that, you know, 40% of the game enjoys at any given time. So, it'd be like it'd be. For me, it's not even about the rewards as much as it is the winning for my server, having some server pride. Uh, we just got our fourth win. So, that's pretty cool. I'm excited that we're trying to move into the positive. Uh, and then I enjoy meeting players from other servers. That's the big thing for me, right? You know, because I, I can't take on a level 70 player. I'm level 50. Now, I can Rialta burn them and stuff. You know, I can annoy them, but I can't beat them. So it's it's not about the PvP element. It's just more about the community element. It's all about what you enjoy, right? Adam says 700 got annihilated in our first incursion. Hey, if y'all want me to come by server 700 and talk about strategies or what the winning servers, uh, servers and incursions do, feel free to invite me to the server 700 Discord. Adam, I'll be more than happy to help out. And let me go ahead and shout this out for those who are listening. Uh, we haven't done one in a few months, but if you're out there and you would like to do a town hall where we come to, or me, although I guess I can bring some of my moderators for other opinions, but come to your server and we discuss, you know, answer questions, you know, give a good hour, let everybody ask things especially if you're a newer server it doesn't matter if you're level you know 66 or you're level 26 i can help you out and talk to you about the game if we need to talk about hazards and you know super highways and you know the removal of the the uh, the trade-up tax for titanium or if we need to talk about you know unlocking cloaking for the first time more than happy to come to your server and do that just shoot me an invite james says server 102 lost to 99 and i'm on 102 this is our second incursion we will adapt and overcome live long and plunder james i believe in you i believe in you i believe in you because i like you I like you a lot uh, joshua says we had a player on 101 tell 100 where everyone was then talked about play uh others into quitting and leaving unshielded look that type of stuff happens right and obviously that will take a lot of joy out of incursions for other players and i wonder truthfully what can scopely do about that i do think there needs to be something 
sure espionage is a thing and i can't say that i haven't been approached by people wanting freebies or even offering freebies it's um it's definitely difficult to do these style of events no doubt about it uh dennis says happy sunday all what was the final tally on mrs rev fun drive well dennis so right here this is uh almost what's left we're waiting for the person who said they would match for those that missed it the last night on twitch we had a very generous person in the community who said they would uh, match every dollar up to a thousand dollars total we did hit the goal last night we ended up raising about a thousand and fifty dollars thanks to an amazing set of community members um actually let me go ahead and give them a shout out here on youtube we don't usually do this but because y'all are really helping with this i just want to say a huge thank you i want to make sure people get recognized for being so caring uh to soju warrior mrs intimidator dorsal mini uh mama samo omicron thomas jules Vern, a uh, john peggle doc boo a slag a uh, william divine james uh moopsy chris mr intimidator louis theo christian silvis bryce uh on call doc viper all donating last night to help with that so thank you to all of you and it is greatly greatly appreciated so huge thank you as we're trying to finish out the surgery front we got about two weeks left to finish out this bar so thank y'all to all who are doing that i did say moopsie's name properly aq what do you mean what do you mean i didn't say their name properly got the sompec yesterday and it's up to tier four and a half that is i'm a little bit jealous barnabas i'm a little bit jealous oh you want me doing the voice ah <laughs> Oh, man. okay. That's that's a good way for you. You can get me there. You can get me there. A 7-1 here did win. We did win by a lot. Very nice, James. Uh, and again, if y'all haven't posted the results yet, post the results of your win in my Discord. We do track those. Oh, and I got a trader. Oh, man. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. Dade says there was surprisingly little lag for them for the first time in a while on incursions, but that was the only plus. So you should hopefully have noticed less lag due to the Unity 2021 update that just rolled out here semi-recently, and that has helped with stability. We noticed that in the monthly grading. Last month's grades were not good if you were talking about like the features and the calendar, but communications and stability both got pretty good grades. In fact, arguably the best grades they've gotten combined in well over a year. So you should have seen it be a little bit better. That does not mean everybody noticed a perfect performance. If you're out there, you Please don't feel like you need to tell me that you had crashes and stuff. I believe you it does not encompass everybody, but generally speaking, there has been improvement to this ability and hopefully more improvements come down the pipeline because it's not perfect. So, but hopefully more come down the pipeline. Uh, Murphy says, can you tap the devs uh, to fix the overflow? Oh, we've already did that Murphy uh, over an hour ago. We informed them that there are multiple players having point issues with the VP overflow and we have made that known and they are looking into it. I don't have anything besides that as an update, but uh, yeah. Paul says, how much does Scopely spend for good grades? Absolutely nothing. Scopely doesn't pay me. Everything that we do is player-based and we had over 2000 players come through and do that. Cause if it was Scopely graded here, let me here give you some visual proof of how you're like, hey, you just had Scopely come in. Let me prove to you that it wasn't Scopely who came in. I can show you one little piece that you're immediately going to go, oh, well, yeah, now it's clear. The Scopely had nothing to do with that. All right, one second here. Let's let's show you. Uh, because the worst part of the grade, like the worst part, and remember, these are all required. So, like, you can't just give a bonus to one part and then, like, crap on the other. Or, I'm sorry, and, and just ignore the other. But if you need proof that there's no Scopely employees, <laughs> this is the worst it's actually been since we started doing the quality versus quantity voting. 90% said it was not a quality month so yeah th this thing definitely got crapped on but stability and communications did much better here recently with the other things not doing so well yeah scopely doesn't participate in my surveys nor do i send it to them i only show them results after it's done so Bart says casual players i said don't like or hate incursion moreover don't uh even know who rev is um actually not true Nemeth, <laughs> believe it or not, most of the people who follow my account are much lower level than me. I actually make it a point to try to meet as many new players as possible. I actually track my demographics. So uh, believe it or not, that's not the case. But I understand that it's not something that's universally loved. It's not something that's majority loved. And we talk about that. We talk about that. We saw glimmers of quality with the Armada spawn rates. I mean, glimmers, right? There were some minor improvements. But when you have overall things being so not good, 
it's tough to really give love to the minor improvements, right? It's tough. They just gave a comp chest out. Oh, did they? Did they just push it? Because I don't have anything yet. But if they did, awesome. But yeah, we did report it. And I want to give credit. Myself and Jess, who's one of the official moderators, we got there literally the exact same time to report the issue about the overflow. So, yeah. Now that curves are over, my server has to get ready for merges. That could be a scary, but also sometimes fun thing. So good luck. And if you need any help or anything I can do, any questions, feel free to reach out to me. So... Burn says I'm intentionally not moving to four star before Rev goes to five star, which that's fair. I'm not going to five star for probably another month or two. I just, and I'll be honest, the main reason is I'm waiting for more and more players to catch up. I don't want to be too far above on my main account, but at the same time, um, you know, I, this account is five years old. So with so many of the players at other level brackets, I, I'm simply going to be higher level than especially our newer players. That just is what it is. But that's also why we restart the game. And it's about that time for my once a year restart, which I do every single year. We'll see when that happens, but yeah. Have I watched the first couple of Discovery episodes? I haven't because I'm a binge watcher. I know I'm one of those dirty millennials. I prefer to let a season finish and then I'll binge the entire thing. The last uh, show that I didn't do that with was Star Trek Picard season three, but I tend to binge it and watch all of it at once. Like I did that with The Mandalorian, like in terms of like an entire season. I, I did that with Loki. I tend to wait for the season to finish and then I hit all of it all at one time. Okay, Because when I watch something, I don't want to wait. And then like, oh, I got to wait seven days for another episode. Ugh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, um, now, if y'all tell me that it's just absolutely amazing and I have to watch it, well, maybe I'll break the rule. But. Struggling to do rare solar armadas. Any crew advice? Level 39. Really depends on what crews you have and also what ships using at level 39 you should be able to beat a rare but i don't know which ships you've unlocked so for example if you've skipped an epic or maybe your epic's only like tier two tier three you might struggle but that would be something that you're more than welcome to reach out to me personally and i'll gladly try to work with you on cruise and, and just kind of see where you're at account wise so that you can win you, uh the server 17 yeah i, I saw that dreamweaver put that out there and <laughs> I don't get involved in server drama, but I will admit that video made me chuckle quite a bit. I don't know if like GNN or Vulcan or anybody are in the chat because sometimes they are, but yeah. Uh, we'll see. Let's see. Let's see. Think going into this incursion, server 80 was the last North American server that was undefeated. Unfortunately, after server war, we got beaten this month. I heard that, Jay Watts. Uh, there, uh, 16 used to be undefeated. They've lost. 80 used to be undefeated. And um, there was one... APAC, I think that's undefeated. I have to actually go through our records and see. But this is why we track them. That's why we track them. Prince says, is it worth to wait for the spin event until next week? I'll tell you this. Because obviously I can't tell y'all what the officers are. Scope will get really mad. I will tell you that there is an officer coming out this month that I really like and want to acquire. But I will say this. If you do not have Hugh, get Hugh. Hugh is... The most valuable PVE officer in the game. Bar none. It's not even close. If you don't have Hugh and you can score in your personal XSLB, get Hugh. You see, I did a little scoring. I mean, I, I can't be number one. Our current number one is 14 million. I'm not doing all that. I would love to have 120 Hugh shards, but that's not feasible for me. If it's feasible for your SLB or XSLB in your bracket, Hugh is definitely worth going after. It's definitely worth going after. But again, this is going to depend on where you personally are. Maybe you've got Hugh at tier three already, and that's not something you're really going for. So. We need more officers exactly like Hugh. So you want just the ability to have multiple Hughes so that you can run it on multiple ships. Is that what you're saying, Pegasus? XSLB is harder. It depends, Dade. Because I'll be honest, 14 million on that XSLB that I just showed you for mine. That's not actually any harder than it is for a typical SLB. It does again, that's why I said it has to be specific to yours, right? Like if it's harder for you, then yeah, don't worry about it. If it's not harder, consider it. You know, again, it's something you have to kind of like base on where you're at, because all I can really do is tell you the value, right? The value of something. Then you have to determine, well, can you can, you know, really go after that and get something significant or is it too pricey? 
for where you're at, your bracket. I mean, if you're a player that's level 56, that means that you're dealing with players who are level 70, right? And let's say that there was a player who just went to level 70. Odds are there's no chance in hell you're getting the, in the top one, right? So it depends on your bracket. If you're a lower level player out there, let's say you're on a newer server and you're level 28 and that's something that's available to you, absolutely go for it, right? Absolutely go for it. You know, so it just is going to vary for you personally. So all I can really do is tell you whether the officers are valuable in terms of your gameplay or not. And Hugh and Janeway both are extremely valuable with Hugh being more valuable, but Janeway also having a lot of value. So the bonus to an XSLB is that you're getting two officers. The drawback is you're competing with more players. If you think that you can score high or even win, then this is a fantastic SLB to dump your mats on. So, Andy says, it'd be awesome if the 50s and 60s were separated again. And again, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, simply because there's not enough players. There, there's still a lot more needed in terms of numbers before they're going to split that bracket. So, they've tried a couple different iterations and stuff. They might continue to try different things. But the base problem is there's not enough players in the 50s and 60s for SLBs of just the 60s. And that's the, the root of the issue. It's the root of the issue. So, when you use Janeway, Ops 46, on time I use her as silence, Janeway gets used in any Armada crew. I'm sorry, any uh, PvE crew. If I'm doing, um, doing, if I'm doing, say, rep hunts, if I'm doing rebooters, I'll use that. Now, because I did manage to get the Enterprise E crew, that is my better crew. But my primary hostile crew before Enterprise E was the Janeway crew. Now, that doesn't mean that's going to be more the most efficient every single hostile, but based on how it's designed, it's good, generally speaking, against almost all hostile because of how her ability works. Now, there are definitely exceptions to that rule. Definitely exceptions to that rule. Uh, I would, if I am doing Voyager, though, I switch Chakotay as captain if I'm going to use that for an armada. So, yeah. Top 10 on my Ops 51 is now 36 million. Top 50 is 7.6. So I did not see the cost benefit. Yeah, and see, King Gaza, again, it goes back to where you're at. And that's why I wanted to mention players in the 50s because those brackets are so, in my opinion, impossible to win unless you are a pretty decent spender. It's not worth it to go for for y'all. And that's not me trying to sound discouraging. It's just simply me being, I believe, being factual, right? There's not much you can do with the brackets being 20 level. It just, it is what it is. But if you are like most players in the game, most of the people who are watching right now, and you know what? 350 people are already watching. I need you to do two things. Number one, share this out with your alliance and your server so we can meet more folks and help more folks. But number two, here's what I want y'all to do. Everybody shout out your operations level right now. Everybody shout out your operations level. Watch the, the chat's gonna go nuts. It's gonna, I'm not gonna be able to keep up with everything, but everybody shout out your operations level and we'll talk about it. See, Mike's level 19. Mike, if you ever see Hugh, listen to me, Mike, if you ever see Hugh in a leaderboard anywhere near your levels, you better go crazy for it. Absolutely not so crazy. You see this guy at any leaderboard in anywhere of the near future, you go nuts on him, okay? You're level 19. Level 30, Strom, you go absolutely nuts to get that guy. Go go crazy. Andy at level 59, go to bed. Ignore. <laughs> go to bed and ignore. All right? Ming, 63, you might be able to score in the top 10. So maybe you do it. A total at le uh, level 40. Absolutely go for this. Prince, level 37. Absolutely go for this. Because if you were below level 40 and Hughes available, that's not a no-brainer because that's the only way to source him. Absolutely go after him. Steven, 63, you might be able to get in the top 10, right? Burnt Pork, 39, absolutely go for it. Spicy Chili, great name, by the way. Level 26, absolutely. Like, you should spend every uncommon you have to get Hugh. Absolutely every uncommon if you're in, like, a, a 30s player. So, it's looking at the varying ranges we have in the chat, everything from high 50s to down in the 20s and teens. It's going to depend on where you're at as a player. So, yeah. It's going to depend on where you're at as a player. And there are some players it's going to make a lot of sense and some it's not going to make sense at all. And 
The value is there in terms of their usability in the game, but your ability to obtain them will vary. And if you're a player in the 50s, you just have to rely on the fact that your sourcing of hue is essentially limited to the Armadas, the Armada loop. Con 27, you're, you're a hardcore go after player. Like if that's available, that, those type of officers, you got to go after it, right? And that'll put you ahead of the game because odds are a player in the 20s who knows about Hugh and how he works, you're like in like the top 5%. Most new players in the game have no idea how good that is unless they come to a content creator's channel. So absolutely take advantage of it. Because even me, like we have some amazing content creators, Major Samo, It's Lube, Ultimate DJ, right? Uh, Tiberius was streaming earlier. We have some great content creators. I happen to be the largest here on YouTube. Um, in any given month, uh, Scopely has actually helped me track this. I reach anywhere from 15 to 25% of the active player base in a month. And I'm the biggest. And I'm not even getting anywhere near to the halfway point. So if you're watching, odds are you have the potential to be the best player on your server because of the information that you can gather, not only from me, but from other CCs. Take advantage of that because there are going to be people who don't know what you know, right? What's the name of the website that shows player ops levels? FTFC.WTF. FTFC.WTF. I am the most ginger AQ. That is true. And sadly, you're not the most British. Uh, the most British would probably have to go to Lube. He's the most British. Q does not work for Armadas, TJ. Only hostiles. I feel like, did not, didn't you send me that question on Discord last night and I answered it? Or did somebody else send me that question on Discord last night? Somebody else do that last night. So I got more huge shards and Borg solos than I can get in the SSLB. So based on your levels, what you're saying, Kevin, because if you manage to get 120 huge shards from a Borg solo armada, I'm going to throw a hissy fit of jealousy. Because yeah, I pull this thing all the time and I ain't never had anything that good. <laughs> I ain't never had anything that good, but yeah, I would, I would flip my stuff over here on uh I, I would i would flip my stuff over here on youtube p says op 39 18 shards short of unlocking so yeah pete if i was you at op 39 i would absolutely go as strong as possible to win that xlb that's what i would personally do and if you can't win it score it that's what i would do obviously you gotta play the game how you want to play the game that's what i would do absolutely and the fact that you're so close is a great job by the way great job so, Tormi says they almost have it at tier four. Oh, tier four Hugh is so good, right? I'm proud of y'all, by the way, for how hard y'all are working at the game. Y'all are doing great. Doing great. Do they'll expand and actually make the simulation useful? Are you talking about this, the battle simulator? I like the battle simulator. I would like them to add more to it. Uh, it's pretty neat, but it's you know, it just kind of sits there. I thought it was fun, like a little fun mini game. That was a little fun mini game. I want them to do more with stuff like that, but we'll see. I don't know of any plans currently, but that doesn't mean any, nothing's being worked on. I truly haven't asked about it in some time, but it was one of my favorite things they pulled out. I'm, again, understanding that not everybody has the same level of enthusiasm for it that I do. I really enjoy it. I think it's fun. So I really enjoy it. I think it's fun. Sword says, just got Honor Guard Wharf. I only could hope to get Hugh as well. Both great officers. Obviously, one for PvP, one for hostile grinding and PvE. But yeah, both are, are must-have officers if you're into either one of those. You kind of have to be into PvE in this game. But yeah. But yeah. And Strange New World coming out. We are the first set of Strange New World officers were PvE-based. Very curious to see if this new set of Strange New World officers coming out are PvE-based. Right? Baromi, great to see you. Good to see you. Glad you're here, my friend. Very glad you're here, my friend. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I slowed my game down and currently cop, uh, top 10 on all 44s of my server. Love that, Curly. A big thing that I've been trying to push players to do is to slow down their gameplay. I believe a slower, more horizontal gameplay is a far more enjoyable gameplay, at least in my experience from the players that I play with. So I think that that's great, Curly, and I'm happy for you. Are you excited for the new arc? Yes and no. I'm going to go ahead and be upfront with y'all. I never like to lie. Not really my thing. 
There's uh, there's something coming y'all are going to hate. And I'm just going to be honest about it. I'm not trying to be negative. You're going to hate it. There's also some good things coming that are undeniably good. And if you say they're not good, I think you're just upset with the game in general. There's definitely something you're not going to like. There's also something that's really good. So we'll discuss that in more depth tomorrow because I get to drop a preview video tomorrow showing you some of that. And we'll talk about it. What will you hate? You have to wait for tomorrow. Simple for when we do our preview video. Have to wait until tomorrow. Fruit Loops, great cereal. If you're into like sugary American cereal, Fruit Loops, classic. Absolutely classic. So. Uh, really depends on average server population. If you're on a server where not many people in your bracket, it's easier. For SLBs, XSLB, you're generally going to have the same number of players in an XSLB for everybody because some servers will have three servers in an XSLB to ensure that the player population of that leaderboard is about the same across the game. So. You'll share both love and hate tomorrow. I'll share what I can preview, but as always, I will share uh, my opinion and I won't hold back on things that I think are bad. I'm not going to just be like, oh, don't worry, this is okay. I'll tell you if something's bad. I'm not going to like, you know, chill. I don't do that. It's not what we do around here. We keep it 100, as the kids say. Keep it 100. I don't even know if they still say that. So, Pete says I've been doing solo mod a day since 39. I took down my first rare day with 13 mil power. Congrats, Pete. That's awesome. And Rock Boss, great to see you. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Good to see you, Rock Boss. What level is sensible to upgrade Cerritos and Titan to? Level 48, max. Uh, there's no reason to hold off on the Cerritos nor the Titan. Take them all the way to the tippy tippy top. All the way to the tippy tippy top. So. Fingers crossed for a new ship, more grinds, and more armadas. Dade, be very careful what you wish for. I got another trader. Oh my goodness, my RNG today on stream is nuts. The stream RNG is crazy. Like the video if you're jealous of Rev's three Zindi Trader spawns here during the video. Wow. Wow, just be jealous. Everybody in the chat, be jealous. Like the video if you're jealous of the Trader spawn RNG. That's, uh, that's huge. That's huge. So. They did have a PvP Strange New World officers with the Battleship Strike Team. So they did have that. You're right. So we'll see what Strange New Worlds provides coming Tuesday. We're 48 hours away. So, just pop trailers roll. Nice, Denise. Good to see. Do you know if the Incursion Exo Comps rolling out before the Incursion was the bonus? Scopely was promising. I believe so. But I can try to verify that if you remind me. Um, it's not something that I asked about over the weekend. So, more mining officers. I can tell. You know what? I'll go ahead and tell you this thrill. I probably shouldn't. I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's not mining officer. So. It's not mining officers. There. Happy. Happy. No. No, no happy. <laughs> no happy. No happy. I probably shouldn't give that level of detail. But it's not a mining officer. So. No. No. Uh. Have you already spoken on the fact that some of the overflow got out of it? Yep, Laromi. That was reported over an hour ago. And yeah, that's something we already did. Fire says, I'm pretty sure Hamster said those exo comps for the bonus. He might have. Again, let me go look real quick. Uh, my meeting with Hamster was on Thursday. And let me go check the announcements channel real quick. Uh, so first contact day. And XSLB. For cube winners. Yes. So Thursday, uh, that was the bonus exo comp to make up for the, the loss. So Thursday, this past Thursday, was the makeup day for the lost exo comps from the incursions previous. So yes, it was. Are they going to increase the mycelium node mining? No knowledge of that happening uh, that I'm aware of. Yo, Leland, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It's not to be a cadet. Thank you. Also, I did see my phone buzz. Let me give a couple of shout outs real quick to one, Heartburn, because, wow, 
Heartburn is wonderful. Absolutely love heartburn. Oh. Ooh, I've had really bad heartburn since somebody on Twitch made me take shots. They did. So if you're out there, you know who you are. But we did have him pull up my cash app. We had somebody. Oh, it was Quincy. I want to say a thank you to Quincy who sent $10 for the surgery fund on cash app. Thank you so much. Very, very kind of you. You're an amazing human being. I don't care what your server says about you. I think you're amazing. So I think you're amazing. We should start a new arc on the closest day to the first of the month of the weekend. Tuesday seems daft. It's always been Tuesday, Jaram, and it always will be Tuesday. It has always been Tuesday and will always be Tuesday. If anything, we complain about this game not being consistent. One thing that is consistent is arcs launch the first Tuesday of every month. First Tuesday of every month. Now, the only time there is an exception to that rule, which is what we actually just had recently, is when there are five Tuesdays in a month. When there are five Tuesdays, you'll have a two-week break. But ARCs launch on the first Tuesday of the month. So. What time did you wake up? Normal time, Matthew. I woke up at a normal human time. A normal human time. Also, a big thank you to Ron. Ron also just donated to the surgery fund. Ron, thank you so much. It's very kind of you to support me and my family. I really do appreciate it. And I'll put it on the board just as I will do with Quincy. Thank you both. Y'all are also very kind. Thank you. Are they going to align the resets? I was under the impression they were going to do that on the 31st. And it didn't happen. So I will try to follow up with that tomorrow. There aren't too many employees working over the weekend that I have contact with. So... Something that I can try to follow up with tomorrow, uh, assuming everybody is kind enough to remind me. And something tells me y'all will remind me. I, I have little doubt that chat will remind me. All right, let me see. Just make sure I don't want to forget anybody who was very kind here in the recent moments just because I heard my phone buzz. Yeah, thank you to Ron. You're absolutely incredible. Quincy, thank you as well. Uh, yeah, y'all are, are freaking legends. But that's the only word I can think of to appropriately apply. Let me see. Just make sure I don't miss anybody. I do think everybody needs to get their flowers if they're being loved. So, yeah, a huge thank you. All right. Thank you, Ron. Pretty cool that you're from Louisiana. We don't have a, a ton of Louisiana Trekkies, at least not known. Hey, Eli, how are you doing? At least Discovery may be a better arc with it not starting now, but was looking forward to Discovery Upgrade or Rework. Here's the problem, Dade. Here's the problem. They already did a discovery update. They already did that. But they did it behind a paywall. And I hate that. And I've complained about it. And I will continue to complain about it. But they already did it behind a paywall. The Disco has a five-tier prime to increase its warp rate. They already did that. Now, I hate it. I think it's bad. Scopely deserves a slap on the hand for doing something like that. You don't lock quality of life updates behind paywalls, especially five level paywalls. But they did. I'm mad at them about it. Also, three people apparently from Louisiana chat. John Lafitte, good to see you. Brandon, good to see you. Hey, if we got that many Louisiana people, we need to do a Louisiana meetup. And well, I guess we can invite some of those Mississippi folk over, I guess. I, I guess. Just none of the Texans. No Texans. Ugh. Yeah. Yuck. Gross. No Texans. Uh, but we'll, we'll invite our fellow Louisianians and maybe some of the Mississippians. They just rolled out some BVP points. They did. They did. Charles, you did? Oh, thank you, Charles. I'll check just a second. I just want to make sure I'm not missing comments. My whole thing as a content creator is uh, my job is to help y'all and entertain y'all in any way that I can. So I definitely want to be one of those guys who's always in chat. I always will be answering as many questions. Harry says, all for inviting the Mississippians. The reason I'm willing to invite Mississippians is because many people might not know this because Louisiana is known for its cuisine. Mississippi can cook too. Mississippi can cook as well. So, what if I was born in Texas but escaped at three weeks old? Then see, Dizzle, you're adopted in. No worries. You don't have any of that Texas stank on you, which is basically just dirt because it's desert in the entire like western half of Texas. Anybody out there who's ever had to drive through Texas, through the West. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Woof. All right, let's see if we get our double pull in here. 
Yeah, I am five away from the Vorcha, uh, Benji. I'm, I am almost ready. I am almost ready. Shall I stop buying Romulan recruits and save credits for the Valdor? I would. Assuming you've got those officers maxed and you've already got transporter patterns unlocked and all that stuff, I would go ahead and stop, yes. Colorado? Oh, I'd love to be Colorado. Realistically, free-to-play 60? Uh, there is no free-to-play who is in the 60s yet. The closest free-to-play that I'm aware of is in, I think, level 55. There's two that I can think of off the top of my head. I think there's two. But, yeah. Also, Charles, just saw it. Thank you so much for donating $20 to Cash App. That helps me and my family. Greatly appreciate it. And that has now been updated on the board. You legend. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. So, Dale, I'm not sure what you're disagreeing with. Um, if, if you think that paying for the Disco Prime is good for you, that's fine. I just don't believe that you should lock quality of life behind paywalls. I don't understand how you could disagree with that as a concept. Now, I didn't say that it wasn't good. Like, I didn't say that the Disco Warp Range Primes didn't provide value. I said that it's wrong to lock quality of life updates behind a paywall. If you find value and you're willing to spend the money, well, clearly, that's why they did it. That's why they did it. But I don't agree with quality of life stuff being behind a paywall. I know the game needs to make money, and I'm okay with the game making money. I just don't agree with those type of moves. I just don't agree with those type of moves. So, just something that I think is distasteful. Jerem says 1.5 million off champ for Fed is the enterprise worth getting with save credit. I think that the enterprise is worth getting. But I also love collecting the faction ships and using the faction ships. So I have a little bit of a bias there. Maybe not everybody would give the same advice. I would get the enterprise though. I personally would. Commercials are not every uh, 10 minutes, Charles, or every 28 minutes. If you're getting them every 10 minutes, there's something wrong because I have it set to every, basically every half hour. Uh, YouTube pushed out a thing about a year ago with their whole like commercials and everything. Um, yeah, I'm just verifying in case they changed it. But yeah, it's set to every, I'm sorry, 24 minutes. I'm sorry, it's every 24 minutes. So if you're getting them every 10, that's a problem. It shouldn't be like that. By the way, you're now distinguished with ROMs. Congratulations. And see, I'm with Matt. Like, if you would have released the Prime for Disco, but it had, like, an immediate free-to-play path, for, here's an example of what I don't mind. Okay? I want to show you a, a great example. NX01. You got to grind out the NX01. You can do it for free, or you can buy it. Also, day one of when it came out, this skin, you could buy it, or you could spend 40 days, or technically longer if you weren't full pulling, 40 days to get it for free. Or you paid to get it sooner. So if you paid for the skin and the NX-01 on day one, you saved like four, four and a half months of grinding. That I think is completely okay. I'm okay with you doing that. I am. I understand games gotta make money. What I don't agree with is when things come out that are quality of life updates or good updates, and the only option is to swipe ye old credit card. Now, if I've got to work for it, I'll work for it. Give me the option. Sometimes I might say, hey, me waiting four and a half months ain't worth it. But I want to have the option to get it for free down the road. So, anyway. Like the extra monster paywall? Yeah, Zach, that one also annoys me. That one really chaps my booty because it was my idea. The fact that they took a great idea and turned it into a prime personally irritates the snot out of me. But it is what it is. I can't control what Scopely does. I can only complain about it afterwards or give them a compliment. They do it what I think is right. So, let me go ahead and do my double pulls here. Do we get any dolomite? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, prime over I got 10! 10 prime over medallions. Hey, that's a huge win. That's a huge win. 10 of them. All right. Speaking of prime sourcing, that is something they did well. Having sourcing for primes there. That is something they did well. I like that. We like that. 
Granted, it's RNG based, so I get to be happy right now while other people aren't happy. But I am <laughs> happy. I am a happy man with that one. And I'm currently working on taking my great eye of a raw to level four. Level four. He says, look at the eclipse with the kids. Uh, no. Honestly, my kids are too young. Uh, I wouldn't want to do that with them. And I am somewhere in like the 90% range. So I'm not like near the total eclipse. I would have to drive about five hours to get there. So I'm, I might go personally look at my 90%. But yeah. Make a video on what to spend orbital medallions on. I, I can. We, we are a long way away from people getting orb medallions but i can go ahead and show you what they are spent on right now if you would like in fact i'm not even going to wait for your rebuttal i'm going to do it now because that's what i do my name's rev and i help out the players and i'm a little eccentric all right here you go prime orb medallions these are the primes these are your primes um which ones would i say are the most valuable that's a toughie uh prime critical uh damage floor that's a big one. Like, that's super valuable. That's super valuable. Prime Exborg Ordnance, also valuable. Um, Prime Crit Evasion, that's a good one. I personally don't like the Cutting Beam ones at all. Don't care about it. Meh. Meh. Don't care about that at all. Doesn't move any needles for me. The manufacturing ones are solid if you're moving into G5. Uh, and the station efficiencies, not a huge fan, but again, yeah. So there, there's some good ones there. There's your list. There's your list. There's your list. I guess that, that counts as me making the video. Well, I mean, I can still make you a 10 minute video and go over like all the different levels and what it applies to, but there's your little quick hitter version of it. There's your quick hitter. What do I want to get crew uh, uh, ship crew videos for older ships like the Enterprise? I've been working on uh, those, Sword. If you remember, I actually just released one. But I am going to go back and do the Enterprise, the Augur, the Centurion. I'm going to do all of those. Uh, it's just, you know, sitting down and going through them. Rev is fading. Oh, wait. Why am I fading? Oh, you mean the camera? Yeah, well, it's because I moved out of the camera. Because I moved out of the camera. Now, if y'all would like to contribute to that, Feel free to reach out to my Discord. I know I mentioned the Discord a lot. You can also do YouTube comments, Facebook, but reach out to me and say, hey, I really like this crew because I don't have an account at 35 right now. I have a, here are the level accounts that I currently have that I actively play on. Uh, 19, 28, 50, 57. I actually need another account in the mid 30s. So if you have some things, we can compare some notes and we can work on videos for the auger the enterprise because you're right things have changed uh since i released my original enterprise video it's actually why i didn't take the video down off youtube but i did hide it so you can't find it anymore because it's a little dated so we do need to go and update those videos i think it's a fantastic idea and i just need to uh, sit there and do a little bit of homework to make sure i'm putting out the information i need to for all of our new players so i don't have an account at the enterprise level yet but i do have it for like the centurion level salad in level the bordis level that one's easy so. <coughs> sorry about the coffee probably probably deuce is not a fan of build fish until he starts off 51 you're right and then i will be more of a fan but keep in mind not many people who are level 51 plus in the totality of the game that's less than uno percent one percent of the game is level 51 plus or above so that's cool but that is why it doesn't affect me now because most of the accounts i play on it doesn't affect is it a page is what a paid ship simple what are you talking about is what a paid ship you need to be specific because there's like a million ships in this game what ship are you talking about what is what a paid ship all right, let me get back in here, see if I can find a working note. Tomorrow's surprise. Nobody said there was a ship coming. Also, any ship that ever comes out is going to be a paid ship month one. Now, ships can be like the NX-01 or the Voyager or the Defiant, and I'll have a free-to-play path day one. 
but there's no such thing as a new ship that comes into the game that isn't paid day one. As long as they have a free-to-play path, though, I don't gripe too much. But nobody said a new ship was coming tomorrow. Visha has a free-to-play path, Andy. Had a free-to-play path the day it came out. That's a sketchy stat. That's not sketchy at all. There are over 200,000 daily players in the game. There are less than 20,000 players between the levels of 51 and 70. That's just math. <laughs> That's just math. I mean, it's... Okay, 1% is more of getting into the upper 60s. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's off. Less than 10%. Less than 10%. But still. Not many people. If you're talking about total accounts, though, total accounts is... Oh, God. I think it, it depends on when they run the archive script. Because, like, just last month, there was, like, 60,000 downloads of Star Trek Fleet Command. Um, there have been times where there was over 1 million accounts active in the game. But when they go through archiving, like people quit and stuff like that, I say total accounts in the game right now, uh, roughly 500,000, 600,000 total accounts. But those players are not playing every day, right? That's not daily players. That's a rough estimate. I don't have the numbers for all the accounts, just handy. Um. I would say there could be even more because I know for a fact that like level one accounts, here, let me pull up what level one accounts were last month. So like level one accounts, let's just use February because I have it handy. There were 121,000 level one accounts. So like when we talk about there being 200K daily players, I never include anything below level 19 ever. It's because I don't know how long those people are going to be here. And generally speaking, you know, it takes you less than a month to get to level 20. So, yeah, I don't I don't count the love the 120,000 level one accounts and the 116,000 level two accounts. So that's 250,000 accounts right there. So I, I guess it just depends on what number you want to look at. So. But we do know that Scopely has acknowledged how many individual active accounts and they use what they use for their daily tracking is they go by IP on the accounts and everything. And there's over 200,000 individual daily players in the game. And that's going by account and IP tracking. So, Stormtrooper, you're not telling me anything I don't know. But again, keep in mind that the accounts get archived every month or so. So you're constantly cycling through a ton of new accounts. Played 18 months and level 56. Very cool. Game's not dead. Definitely not. Uh, that doesn't mean that they can't shoot themselves in the foot and they can't die. But the game's definitely not dead. Um, but I also don't want to use that as an excuse for like trying to say they're doing all the right things. Because I would strongly disagree with that. Strongly disagree with that. But yeah, they archive semi-often. They, they generally run an archive around the same amount of time they release a new server. Certain servers are dead. I mean, define dead. There are very few servers that have less than, say, 700 active players on it. Very few. Because Scopely doesn't want there to be a server with 10,000 active players on it. That's by design. So, that's by design. Tons of new accounts when Scopely makes a boo-boo and kills S97. Yeah, 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 I was there. I got an account on 97. I was there. I remember. Just like I have an account on server 32 when server 32 got archived. The entire server just got archived. So that was fun. Apparently, it's my fault, I think, because these seem, things seem to happen on servers that I live on. So, how, uh, how many players per server? In terms of, like, daily players... Almost every server in the game has more than 1,000 daily players. Now, that can shock a lot of people because you'll go into, like, your global chat and just see nobody. But here, let me check my global chat. All right, we actually have somebody doing some level of conversation over the past couple of hours. People running waves and stuff. 
Like server 20 has over 3,000 accounts, over 1,700 dailies, and GC is a ghost, ghost space. Nobody talks. So, yeah, I mean, basically every server has got over 1,000 daily players. There are exceptions, hence why I think, what, six servers are merging right now? It does happen. It does happen. I think one of the best time savers that Scoble introduced was freebooters and not having to swarm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, we, we all agree with that one, Gerald. We all agree with that one. We go ahead and speed this up. And we... Here's several things that I can do. I'm going to go do some silence real quick. Go do some silence real quick. <clears throat> they aren't talking, they're grinding. There you go. There you go. I, I, again, Stormtrooper, I'm aware. I was there. Remember? I was there. So, what's the stat for 57? I mean, I don't have 57 stats pulled up right now. And I would have to actually go pull them up and everything. And I don't have the document open. That's the whole thing. Uh, so, and we've only got, you know, what, 20 ish minutes of the stream yet uh, left. So, I want to make sure we're getting everybody's questions answered. But that, that's a very specific question for 150 plus servers in the game. 150-ish servers throughout the game. Okay, Storm. Um, next time, Storm, just so I can see it, just make sure like you at their name or something because uh, if I don't see somebody else's name, I assume you're talking to me. But if you say, hey, John, it's this, then I'll be like, oh, just skip this comment, move on to somebody else. Have you talked much about Strange New World coming? I mean, it depends on what you want me to talk about. I can tell you it's Strange New Worlds. I can talk about what you see in the trailer. Like we see in Benga in the trailer. We see... Nurse Chapel's uh, posterior in the trailer. We see the Gorn in the trailer. We see Klingons in the trailer. We see Pike. We see Spock. We see all these in the trailer that's a release. I can comment about any of that, but I can't tell you specifics. So, is there a server that's been merged twice? There's actually multiple servers that have been merged twice, Edward. Yes. What happens when players on the account that is getting merged, if you can explain the concept? I don't understand what you're asking, Prince, to be honest with you. I don't understand what you're asking. How many five-star uncommon or rare ships do you recommend for light spin? Same I do for every level. Um, oops, let's just hit this one right here. One to two. One to two. And if you're like a, a collector like I am, eventually get all of them. Like one to two. Slow play your game. And thank you, Mark. I actually had forgotten about Anomalous Phenomenon. Thank you so much for the reminder. I legitimately had forgot about Anomalous Phenomenon. That is a very good reminder, and you are appreciated, my friend. Let me go over here. Send that out. You just finally unlocked Una with Incursion Tokens? Congrats, um, to Corsi. That's awesome. See, I love to celebrate every little victory we have in our games. Because it's a milestone, and I think that's fun. I like celebrating our milestones. C. Dizzle says, I'm a new Ops 46, and since I'm still a ways from the pylum, would you suggest pushing my Kelvin or Valdor higher than Tier 7 so I can try Silent? Personally, no. Personally, no. Here's why. Silence are meant to be done with a ship at your level, and Silence, the loop of Silence, has a daily drip right here for temporal disruptors. You got a daily drip for it. Personally, I would save your materials instead of pushing up your Valdor Katinga. Save all that for your ships on 46 and your researches. Because a tier seven Valdor can beat a 46 depending on how good your research and what crews you're using. That's a really tough buy, but I would just wait. But again, I play a slower gameplay now. I slow things down a little bit. You have a video on server? I don't know what a video on server merger would even contest. Uh, can, System. of there's nothing to really be said about mergers one server goes into another territory gets wiped that's it that, that's the extent of how mergers work one server goes into another territory gets wiped clean that's it like that's a, a server merger that's server mergers i don't know what the video would even be about and quincy love you i don't even know what you would do it about you tell me what you need information wise and i guess i can make one How do mergers handle duplicate alliance names? Um, if there is a perfect duplication, like literally verbatim, verbatim, one will get, they, they get renamed. One get, I think the moving one gets renamed. But I can't even think of a time that ever actually happened. 
I can't think of a time that actually happened. Is camping a 39 still a good strategy? In my opinion, absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Uh, that's not true, Paolo, uh, Paolo, because everybody who watches my streams watches me hunt the 49s. As soon as 46 is run out, I'll clear the 49s out for people. Now, I'll do 46s because I can kill more of them, but me and on this stream, we've had three people killing 49s at the same time. And I encourage you, if you're watching and you are a player like me who doesn't ops rush, you take your time and you have very strong ships for your level, kill 49s or whatever the applicable hire is because I do it. I farm the 49s. I'm going to do the 46s if they're available and nobody's farming just because there's more of them and there are a ton of 46s right now. Yeah, I'll farm the 49s, no big deal. I'll help everybody out, but nobody's farming but me right now, so I'll just hit the 46s. There is a selfishness to some people out there that need to stop being selfish. Because there are people like me who could easily farm the 49s to get their daily, and they don't. They farm the 46s. You need some people out there to stop being so daggum selfish. You need some people to stop being so selfish. So if you're out there, and you are like me with a 55, 60 million pylum and you're level 48, hit 49s and stop being selfish. Help out everybody else. That's what we need. I'm not saying that Scopely couldn't have made these nothing but 46s, and I, I understand that idea. But we have a problem with players being selfish too. And players need to stop being so selfish. They need to be more altruistic with their server. That's my opinion. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be. So, anyway. Call oh, broken loop. It's not broken to me. But again, I don't rush ops levels. I don't rush research. I get all, every crew that comes out because I play very slow. But I also play very slow. You got to remember that people who've been playing for five years like I have, almost every five-year player is above where I'm at. So, it... it Depends on how you want to play. And there are drawbacks to playing faster. There are drawbacks to playing slower. You know, I am one of the strongest 50s around. One of the strongest ones on my server. I'm not even the top 250 in power. But no loop that's come out have I struggled with. And as nice as it might be to be powerful, I'll tell you what's more frustrating, not being able to do content when it comes out. That's a heck of a lot more frustrating than me being weaker than a person who's spending more money than I could spend anyway. So, there you go. There you go. Viper says, I'm a three-year player as I had an 18-month break and you're higher than rev. Yeah, you are Viper. And you're a beautiful player. We love you. But, yeah, because hostile hunting silence is definitely hard, but it doesn't have to be as hard as it is for some people. John, what the heck, sir? John, you just get to 50 memberships to the channel? Well, that's heckin' generous of you. What's that for, John? John, next time you'll do something crazy, just fill up that bar. Thank you, John, that is heckin' nice. That is really heckin' nice, John. Thank you so much. John, I, I wish you had been in the stream last night. You could have celebrated with us. We had a, uh, and I'm telling you this because you're a longtime supporter and you're so appreciated, John. Thank you. That, that's like insanely generous, John. Thank you. But I wanted to celebrate with you. And John, by the way, don't forget today is movie night. I want you here for movie night, John. Movie night is in three and a half-ish hours, so don't miss it. Um, we had on our Twitch stream last night, John, another community member who matched up to a thousand dollars the donations so that's how we got to shoot so far in the surgery fund people like you viper everybody else thank y'all for your contributions and john again holy heck thank you uh, what movie are we watching let me look real quick for those who have no idea what i'm talking about uh, if you go to my rev uh rev site you go to my website revduce.com we have a memberships channel here and if you go to members Anybody who's lieutenant or higher a month, we have movie night two times a month right now. So about every other week, 
And today, the movie that we're currently set to watch, because y'all vote. I don't even vote on the movies because they're almost always movies I've never heard of. Uh, the movies that are... Hold on, where is the vote? The movie that we're watching today... Oh, man. What are we watching today? It's actually a tie. So we need somebody to come break the tie. It's either going to be Glory or Tombstone. Glory or Tombstone. So we need somebody to come break the tie. So if you're out there, if you're out there and you're one of our members on our website, RevDeuce.com, come vote in our our movie channel because I have no idea um, what we're going to watch until we watch it. So. But yeah, John, make sure you're here for movie night, man. I can't wait to... uh, experience that with you all right so let's get back to our grinds real quick and again john thank you 50 get that that's never happened here on youtube that is wild thank you so much john that is absolutely crazy thank you for supporting me and the kids double feature i mean that would eat up into my my time with my kids so i can't do a double feature but we are doing movie night every couple weeks it's something that we do with those who support the channel so oh great john i'm glad you got your shirt that's awesome do you like it you like the shirt? How'd you like Spies Like Us? I actually rated Spies Like Us, Viper. Um, Viper, are you in that Discord? So I actually have a... Um, I don't, Viper, I don't remember if you're signed up because I know you support the channel, but I don't remember if you are part of the monthly uh, club. But I rated Spies Like Us on my grading scale, 15 out of 35. It was okay. I would say it's probably the second worst movie we've watched. We've watched six movies so far. But it wasn't a bad movie. Like, I wasn't upset that I watched it. But it it was probably maybe the worst movie that we've watched so far. Yeah, Ferris Bueller is the best movie that we've watched that y'all have asked me to watch. Uh, Ferris Bueller has the best rating that I've given out of movies y'all have asked me to watch. That was probably the best one. Idiocracy was also really funny. Office Space was solid. Yeah, I gave Office Space a pretty solid rating. But Ferris Bueller's Day Off was the best. because So if y'all aren't familiar with the theme, the theme that people do with the movie night is everybody always recommends movies I've never seen. So I had never seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'd never seen Fifth Element. I've never, I had never seen Demolition Man, Idiocracy. So we've been watching all these movies together. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Y'all are more than welcome to come join in if y'all are on the website. And anyway, if y'all got questions too, throw them in. I thought I knew what dual faction grinding was, but I think I was only single faction. Could you explain more? Dual faction grinding is bringing up two factions at the same time. It's like I have both Klingon and Romulan over 1 billion. Now, because I'm currently bringing Federation to 1 billion, my Romulan is tanking. But dual grinding is bringing up two at one time at at the same pace that you can take advantage of both factions, their credits, uh, their ships, their officers, and uh, just in my opinion, just greatly improves your gameplay by having two at a time. What are you most looking forward to next in your FCFC progression? Oh, I can show you that. I can show you the thing I'm looking forward to next. That. That's what I'm looking forward to next. That's what I'm looking forward to next. I've already got almost all the blueprints for it. It's just going up there. Yeah, this is it. This is what I'm looking forward to. I'm excited. Ships tend to be a big... Ships typically are my main thing for upgrading. Like that's generally what I'm looking forward to the most are the ships. Ships are probably the thing I look forward to the most in the game in terms of progressing. That's what I look forward to the most. It's not like, because G5, the Armada chests are amazing in G5. That's something to look forward to. But what I look forward to the most are the ships. 
Is the Defiant good to have on Borg Solos? Absolutely. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. <laughs> My brain read Dominion. Uh, the Defiant does not, N-O-T, not, put it in bold, does not get the research because it is not classified as a Federation ship in-game. Even though it's a ship from the Federation, it does not get any Federation bonuses, meaning that TransLink research does not apply to any specialty ship. Discovery, Defiant, Voyager, Titan, Cerritos, none of those get those bonuses. So it's absolutely not good for that. Sorry for miss saying that in the beginning. Any interest in the new Deadpool movie? Absolutely, John. 100%. John, you want to fly down here? We'll go watch it in theaters together. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I love the Deadpool movies. I love them. Absolutely love them. All right, let's uh, start doing this grind. Currently 42 tier six Katinga. Should I keep leveling it or wait for the 46? I would say this, Leland. My strategies for faction ships are five, seven, nine. Um, so I would actually take it to tier seven in your case because you're at six. I'd already go and push it to seven. That's me personally, but I probably wouldn't take it to tier nine. I wouldn't take it to tier nine. I'd do the five, seven, nine method. So that's, it's not a perfect method, but the ideology be behind my five, seven, nine is progressing between PVE, Armada, and PVP ability, as well as balancing the cost of upgrading, as well as officer slots. And it's also not taking into account whether a player is a spender. Because if you're a heavy spender, you're one of the few that can think about going to, say, tier 12. Now, even though I have a pylon that's heading towards tier 10, that's only happening because I'm now level 50, right? I would never tell you to go to a tier 10 pylon if you're mostly free to play or a low spender at level 46. Later down the road, maybe sure. You can see I, I still need 2,000 ship parts to make that happen. But yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Just uh, words of wisdom with Rev. Words of wisdom is here. Tier 7 is the sweet spot for me. No rare match yet. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I don't go past tier seven for certain things is not taking rares because if I would have had a Kelvin, well, I can't afford that. Because you get a lot of uncommon ship parts in the game through various means. It's still tough to get the rares. The rares are still a, a bottleneck. So you want to have every little precious rare you can get. And there's specialty ships that want some things too. So speaking of things, where's my Talios real quick? Let me look at my Talios. Let me look at my Talios since we got that event going on. And, yep, I could upgrade that. What do I want to upgrade? What would I like to upgrade? That's a lot of whole health boost. Let's do that. Let's do that. Now I don't have any more, any more charged nanoprobes. Need more charged nanoprobes. But... Yeah, you got to be very careful with what starts taking what ship parts and everything else. So, I use in solos Kelvin, Monavi, and Enterprise. Should I ditch one? I mean, only if you have something better. And it depends on which solo you're running. So, for example, I would not take a Monavi to a Borg solo. I wouldn't take a Monavi to a Borg solo. It depends on which one you're running. Now, if you're just doing the Texas solos, that's completely fine. 2013 Deadpool game? What Deadpool game, John? And John, if you want to stream something in the Discord beforehand, you absolutely can. Uh, I'm more than happy to open up a stage if you want to stream movies and hang out with people beforehand. Your Kelvin is tier 8 at Oz 43 I'll free to play. I think that's great, Albert, but here's your problem. If you plan to get the pylum, you shot yourself in the foot a little bit because rare parts. So you're going to make your pylum a little bit hard to get. But here's the good news. Good news. Coronar just as good. Get a Coronar instead. Get a Coronar instead. And that way, you don't have to worry about the fact that you spent rare interceptor parts on your Kelvin. Get your Coronar. There you go. Problem solved. Problem solved. 
So I don't know about Deadpool game. Like I've watched Deadpool one and two, but I don't know about Deadpool game. And no Viper. I've not uh, watched the new ones yet. I have not. I've not watched them yet. I have not watched them yet. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible, terrible. But I've not watched them yet. I shoot myself in the foot for fun. Tier 7 Valdor getting the pylum immediately and then the Tribune. Hey, man. I have all three of those ships and I have no regrets. None. I love them all. My only debate is I have this internal struggle. Do I go ahead and put the Metreon Cascade everything on the Tribune to make the Tribune my main ship? Or do I still keep the Pylum as my main ship? That's my only internal struggle right now. Like how high do I take the Tribune? Because remember, this doesn't take away from my Vorchild. This is four star parts. Like this doesn't hurt me. Like if I upgrade that, it doesn't hurt. The only thing it would hurt is, you know, some buildings maybe or research, but how high do I take the Tribune? And like, how high do you go? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Because sitting at a flat tier seven, it's slightly stronger than my pylum. And if I put the Metreon Cascade on it, it would be much stronger than my pylum. But my pylum's a lot cheaper to use. There's no wrong answer here. It's like, when do I make that decision? And do I make that jump? I don't know. It's like, it's an internal debate I've had for weeks now. Like, what do I do? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, four-star buildings do you have still? So I've still got all the guns. But remember, these don't cost any uncommons. So when you go from 50 to 51, you're switching into the five-star economy. And everything 49 to 50 is basically free. It doesn't really cost anything. And almost all of my internal buildings are done. Uh, This one's not done yet right here. So I've got the shuttle bay I could do. But most everything in here is done for the most part. Still could do the warehouses and everything. Knock those up to 50, which I will have to do at some point. I'd say half my internal buildings are done, but they don't really cost anything. And again, that's the danger I talk about with level 50. There's nothing wrong with camping at level 50. You just bought the 360 version on Facebook Marketplace? 360 version of what, John? Oh, Xbox 360? Oh, the game. Oh. I'll be interested to see it. Um, anyway, there's nothing wrong at all with camping at 50. You just got to be very careful because going to 51 is basically free. But if you go to 51, you're opening yourself up to a new economy you might not be ready for. That's the only drawback. So we camp at 49 just to make sure we're safe. But if you're careful and knowledgeable, you absolutely can camp at 50 and take advantage of all the things that come with it. And see, also something to note, if you're level 50, if you're level 50, you can get five-star materials like this right here. Something to keep an eye on if you didn't know. You can get five-star materials. So upgrading your station can get you five-star materials at level 50 in the daily events. Not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people know that. So there are some advantages to 50. You just got to be very, very careful because it's essentially free to go up. And then once you do it, you go, oh, crap. (laughs) Oh, crap. So... Uh, let me speed up some of these. I don't have uh, enough speed up, so we're just spin latinum. That's fine. Um, whatever. That's why I do my latinum missions every day so I can come on stream and blow latinum like a crazy man. Make y'all happy. For the 46 ship, is the pilot a must or is the coronar equivalent? Coronar is equivalent. Now, I like having both. I have both a coronar and a pilum, and I have no regrets of having both. But there's no wrong choice of which one to go for. Yeah, five-star materials also means primes. Absolutely right. And another thing I'm doing, the stockpile five-star, even though it isn't here yet. And to be very clear, I'm not saying this is a lot, but I am saving my bundles for 30-day chest for this, when this switches to five-star. Oh, it actually has five-star in it now. I forgot. Level 50. I've got five-star in this now. So 
I have these saved and put to the side for that push. Any idea how we get uh, Sato and Archer charge in the future? So Sato has no sourcing. Archer is only sourced currently level 51 plus. Currently only source level 51 plus. And I don't know what changes or what they're going to do to um, make that easier for everybody in the future. But that is the current sourcing. Yeah, Archer and Trip are sourced level 51 plus, And that's the only ones that have that sourcing. Why no love for the Newton? There's nothing wrong with the Newton. Absolutely nothing wrong with the Newton. So let's, let's sort by shipyard level. So for those of you who are in the 40s, there is nothing at all wrong with the Newton. Uh, let, where are we at here? Here's the Intrepid, blah, 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 blah. Where are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at? All right, so here's your three. Your Coronar, your Newton, your Pylum. There's nothing wrong with the Newton. The only drawback to a Newton is it's a battleship, so it's slow. That's it. It has All three of these ships have the exact same ship ability. They give you more loot, which means more rep, more armada rewards, etc. They're all good ships. They all work the same. They have the same ship ability. The only drawback to the Newton is it's a battleship, so it's slow. That's it. Get a Coronar, completely okay. Get a Newton, completely okay. Get a Pylum, completely okay. So there's no wrong answer there. So if you're going after Newton, don't feel bad. The only, oh, okay, there is one other big problem for the Newton. It's hideous. There is that. The Newton's ugly. I mean, it's, it's the big Bertha of ships. It is, the, it is an ugly, ugly ship. That's the only other thing. It's ugly. But they're all essentially the exact same ship. The Pylum has probably the best firing pattern for PvP, but at the same time, the Coronar will whoop the Pylum's tail, right? It's, they're all good. They're, very, they're all very good. Like, I love my Coronar. If I could go back in time, would I go Coronar first? Sure. It wouldn't hurt me at all to go Coronar first. So. But the Newton is hideous. Big Bertha ain't pretty, but she works so well. She works so well. You look at the Newton and think of a big World War II battleship? Yeah, call it the USS Iowa. I don't care. You know, name it, do whatever you want with it. I'm just saying it's ugly. How can a ship with so many engines be so slow? Oh, well, Paulo doesn't watch Star Trek. Those nacelles are warp engines, sir. They create a warp containment field so that you can have your warp bubble push you through space and time. Those aren't impulse engines. Learn your Star Trek, Paulo. Ugh, you're the reason that Scopely puts like stuff coming out of the nacelles like it's an exhaust. It's people like you. <laughs> What'd you think about the incursion outcomes? I mean, nothing really different than what I normally think. Nothing that, I mean, we happen to win this time. Server 20 actually won, which for me was nice. I mean, I don't have anything like special to say. No surprise. I mean, but what would the surprises be? I don't, I don't know what their surprises would be. Sarko's are the ugliest ship in the game. I'm not going to argue with you. I think the Sarko is also ugly. Yes. The Sarko is also ugly. So Viper, we'll need to finish going through the results from incursions. We did gather all the results, but to finish going through all of them for me to be able to say if somebody's still undefeated, I think there's still one undefeated. If we're talking about the ones who were participating in incursions the entire time, there are some newer servers that still haven't lost, but maybe they've only played twice or five times. So we're hundred percent sure. Um, don't know what that last word is. I know it'll never happen, but wish incursions were based on server strength rather than server age. Well, I don't think they should be because we actually have many examples of servers that are higher power and everything getting their tails handed to them by weaker servers. If anything, the weaker server has the advantage. 
Believe it or not, the weaker server actually has the advantage. Because the bigger the server and power and everything, the more likely they are to have high spenders. And the high spenders, all they got to do is not shield. You raid a high spender, there goes the incursion. It only takes one high spender to unshield. There it goes. You lost. There it goes. So you have, if you have a lower power, and if you had less players and lower power, you actually have the advantage. So there you go. Let's see where I'm at in the daily event doing those guns. Hey, rank two. Look at that. So if I can manage to uh, get these scores in, means I can get me some five star. Sneak it in there on that leaderboard. 61 beat up 67, which has the second biggest alliance in the game. There you go, Dr. Juby. By the way, shout out to you and Duvall. Where's Duvall at? Where's Duvall at? Red Pips be bugging me. Red Pips be bugging me. Is there a record kept of incursion wins and losses? Yeah, it's in my Discord, DeCourcy. It's in my Discord. It's in the Volunteer Charts channel. We keep a track record of every server, every incursions. That's why I ask people to drop all my stuff. Like every, every time we do incursions, we have a channel for putting the results in because we keep track of that. And then we have a chart that has it all listed that you can find in my Discord and even in Stewie's Discord. So we do track that stuff because we're nerds and we're very obsessed with this game. Like maybe to a, uh, a gross degree, we are obsessed with this game. So yeah, we do track all that. So if you're ever curious, we do have it to where you can find it. And I need to do more waves. Ugh. Always something to do in this game. I got to go do waves. Maybe we'll do waves tonight. I don't know. I got to do waves at some point. At some point. My server is server 45. Uh, World War Torn in Battle Hardened Group. And when we hit, they were not ready for us. Rat start. Like that. Like that. Like that a lot. Any QLL improvements in the pipeline that you think are likely? Well, there is a pretty big QLL update coming Tuesday. Can't tell you what it is. John says, I don't shield in incursions, but I'm also active and I've not been cracked much. You just be careful, John. You get paired with one of my servers and somebody comes by with an Enterprise E or a Scimitar or something like that. You better shield up. <laughs> but I know that you're the strongest on your server. And until you have that ascension happen again, you're, you're not too worried right now. You're not too worried. So understandable understandable go ahead and start this one you reckon rev should press 51 well you reckon wrong you reckon wrong no sir no sir re bob that's not my plan um there's some things i would like to accomplish first before i, I make the push i mean I'm, I'm i can do it I guess I could just have the building going since it takes a year and a half. But, yeah. Here's the thing that's going to happen. As soon as I do that, everybody in the chat's going to be like, congratulations. I'm like, oh boy. <coughs> uh, yeah. Congrats, you're going 51. I'm really just waiting on y'all. I'm waiting for more people to move into the 50s because, you know, it's, it's like I said a few streams ago. The highest population density of any one level in this game is still level 39, right? So, Guy says, we were winning by 20 trillion until the very last hour when someone from our server was 17, crossed, and fell asleep. Damn. Did y'all try to defend it and everything? How'd that go? Wait a little. Yeah, I'm in no rush, though. I feel no pressure to go into the 50s. I'm excited, but I feel no pressure. I'd actually like to get another account in the mid thirties. So, um, I really would so that I can make sure or feel good about moving when I do go into the fifties. All right. Sorry. How did you eat your lattice so quickly? Weren't you out a couple weeks ago? Um, I wasn't out of Latinum a couple of weeks ago. 
I was out of Latinum when we built the Tribune, which has been over a month, two months ago, two, three months ago. But I get Latinum from Battle Pass, the monthly Elite Pack, and then I spam the hell out of away teams. Like, I am constantly spamming form trade agreement and stuff and tactical simulator to get as much Latinum as possible. I generally would like to get, if I can, this also isn't including me pulling my Fecia stuff, I like to get 50K Latinum a day if I can, uh, or more, or more. That's kind of like my goal, is to try to get that through the refineries and everything like that. But it's a lot easier to get Latinum where I'm at than it is, say, if I was level 34. Where do you get the AT speed ups from? Events and then doing my daily every day. So, then the material spin events, what are the bad parts of going 50 plus? Well, material spin events is number one. Uh, number two is going to be four star ship parts for the most part disappear. So, that's a big negative for a lot of players. So, it makes it even more difficult to get your pylum, et cetera, leveled up if that's what you're still wanting to do. And just the fact that you're switching to a new economy. I mean, some of the same pain points you feel going into the 40s compared, you know, after the 30s, you'll feel in the 50s. And even more so because ship parts and things become a thing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. Just be cognizant that those changes happen and you just got to prepare for them and then you handle them and it's no big deal. Also, do I have another? Oh, I just got all the guns. Oh, no. I'm running out of ways to score my leaderboards. So in terms of my materials, my five-star materials, here's where I'm at five-star wise. I got a little bit of crystal, but I don't have much of anything. So I've been trying to recently here in the past couple of months work on these leaderboards. Is it strange that I'm already considering trying a new account? Not at all. I love restarting the game. I really do. Absolutely love restarting the game. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. I really enjoy restarting the game. Uh, I do it about once a year. So, but anyway, guys, I've had a great time. Appreciate it, y'all. If y'all haven't already, come join the Discord. And if you want to help with the surgery fund, check out the donate links, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. We are at our time. We're going to wrap up in three hours. We have got our movie night with our members. So if y'all are a part of that, come on by. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. I will be here tomorrow on stream and having a preview video for all of you who are curious about Strange New World. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Live long and plunder. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Appreciate every single one of you. And I'm out for the day. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.